Welcome to Epitome Video Training. In this session, we are going to be going over how to convert one of the LAN phones we created in the last session into a remote phone. Uh, the reason that we advise to do this on um, this stage of your installation process is because any remote SIP device may involve having to contact some third party entity. Um, you might need to contact the IT department for the company you're installing the system at to get the port forwarding configured in their router. Um, that's just one example and that's why we advise to get this done early so that everything is out of the way early in the day. You're not making a phone call to a third party at 5 o'clock and having to find out that when you thought your day was completed you now have to return the next day because the people you need to contact are not available immediately. There's a couple of things that would need to be done. Um, we can go to wiki.epitome.com and you can find a guide on how to configure a remote phone. So we'll go to HD phones, once we're at wiki.epitome.com, and then we'll go to remote phones. And here is an outline of the steps involved in converting a phone from a local phone to a remote phone. Uh, we'll start off with the router. Port 5060 UDP and port range of 10,000 through 20,000 TCP and UDP needs to be forwarded from the router to the PBX's local IP address. Once that is configured, whether you have a third party who had to do it for you or if you have access to the router yourself, then you would move into the PBX. Very first step I always do is go to PBX Setup SIP and I ensure that the public IP address of the site where the PBX is located has been entered under the external IP address field. We have done that already here. If you had not, you would enter it, save changes. I then go up to SIP access control and to the access control list. And on this, our demo system, we have a couple of phones that are registering from a location where we would not know their static public IP address. So we have deleted the SIP service for this system so that that can occur. You might have the SIP service here from loading recommended defaults. As you can see here, we've got the SIP service, but it's not listing any public IP addresses. So if you had a remote phone that tried to log into the PBX, it would not be permitted to communicate. So we would come down here to add new rule, service of type SIP, and we would put in a make up an IP address here with a forward slash 32 at the end. The 30 forward slash 32 means we will only communicate in a, with exactly this address. We would not communicate with 1234-5677. You would click Create Rule. That moves up here. And now that remote device is permitted to speak to the PBX. And we would apply changes here. I'm not going to on this system because I do not wish to cause phones that are currently registered to lose their registration. You can always just delete the SIP rule by clicking the X here. Again, if you don't know the public IP address of a remote device that's going to need to communicate to the PBX. Once that is done, now we get to the real nuts and bolts of it. You go to Destinations Extensions. In the previous session, we built these couple of extensions. I'm going to modify extension 612, which had previously been registered to the PBX. We go down under Advanced, and we will switch the location from LAN to WAN and we would save changes. By switching this, what we have basically done is told the PBX a device is going to try and register as extension 612 and it's going to come from an IP address outside of the local net. This is permitted to do that. Then we go to destinations extensions, we find extension 612 and we click on the pencil with the handset which is the phone settings for that particular extension. This will bring up a page that allows us to come down to SIP and network settings and we will change the SIP location here from LAN to WAN. What that's going to do is take the external IP we set at the beginning of this video and tell the phone that is now your server to, for communication in terms of registering as a SIP device. At this time we also change the time server location from use PBX as time server to use PBX time server. Once that is done, we come down and click Save and Configure. Let that do its con 
configuration. It pushes that configuration to the phone. Now I'm going to leave here and return back just to show you how the IP addresses do change. They just don't change immediately while you're looking at the display. If we come back in and we can see, well, it's going to use the public IP address for the PBX to communicate over SIP, and the phone is going to use pool.ntp.org for its time server. Once that is done, I typically come to reporting monitoring, take the phone out to a remote site, and you will see something very similar to this. This is a remote phone registered from a public IP address. That is what you expect to see when the phone is working correctly. Um, we have run in, there are there are multiple instances where you may have a router that has a application layer gateway. We have found in our experience if a router has an application layer gateway that needs to be disabled in order for SIP to function correctly. Basically the application layer gateway breaks your um, your NAT session and when the NAT session breaks the phone is no longer registered to the PBX. So at this point what we have is we took an extension and we converted it to be a remote phone and we have that remote phone out at its remote location. Now we need to do some testing. Um, obviously the very first thing is when it's plugged in can we come to the monitoring page and see that it's coming in from a public IP address and has a status of OK. That's step one. You have a phone that's functional. At this point the net first next thing I would do would be make an outbound call from the remote phone and it can be just to a local extension that's at the office where the PBX is. Make that call outbound from your remote phone. Does the other phone ring? Can they answer it? Is there two-way audio? Then have a LAN phone from where the PBX is located make an outbound call to the remote phone. Does the remote phone ring? Can you answer it? Is there two-way audio? Once those have been shown to be functioning correctly, I then leave the remote phone idle for 10 minutes. After that 10 minute period of time, I do come and look on the monitoring page to ensure that it's still registered and then I will have someone at the local office call to the remote phone. If after waiting idle for 10 minutes the remote phone can still receive calls then I would say things are running very smooth and everything is good and you can send the phone to its uh, you can leave the phone there if it's intended to be a remote phone at that location or you can bring it back to the office, ship it out to the real location, whatever needs to be done. If you end up having a problem where after 10 minutes of idle the remote phone is not able to receive calls, there's a good chance there's something wrong with the router at either the main or the remote site and now you have to troubleshoot, find out if there's an ALG or something else that's breaking the net. And basically we are complete now. What we have shown is that the router has been configured correctly to have remote SIP communicating inbound to the PBX and that the phone is configured correctly and whatever remote site it was sent to for testing has a router that handles remote SIP the way everything needs to be handled. And that will conclude our training session for today. We'll see you for the next video.